We are going to make a Monte Carlo simulation of these stock market values. Y you can make this list on your own, you can make the list longer, you can make it shorter, all the formulas take care of that. These dates are just fantasy dates. So what are we going to do? We are going to predict what the next day's value will be based on the performance so far. So we put in column D 100 next values. And we do that by uh, predicting based on this mean and that standard deviation what the next value will be. And you will see the results vary enormously. That's why we need a Monte Carlo simulation. We have no certainty. So we put in here the norm inverse function based on a random number but around the mean in E4 and the standard deviation in E6. So what we are going to do is we are going to um, calculate here the mean that is the average of column B. I did the entire column so if the, the number of values is longer no problem. Standard deviation similar story. But there is a lot of variability involved of course. So we are going to repeat these 100 values 30 times. And we do that with a data table. We put here the average of column D this time. And then we are going to repeat that 30 more times. And we do that here by selecting this range. Make sure that you include the formula on top, that you include the previous column, and then you go to data, data, what if analysis, a data table. No row input cell, and for the column input cell I take an empty cell, for instance here or there, it doesn't matter. Let's say here. And at the moment you click on OK, it is going to run that 30 more times, that column D. So we calculate the mean of the means, that's the average of G1 through G31. Then we find out what the last value is in column B by using the index function. In column B, find out how many cells we have in that column. Because that column has a label, we use the count A function that also counts that value word, column B. And it found 9.83. And then we created a formula that is going to calculate should we buy or sell based on our simulation of the next value tomorrow. So we use an if function. If G3 is greater than the last value plus 1% of the standard deviation, but that is up to you, That's, this is a very primitive kind of prediction, then we buy. Otherwise, if G30 is less than G34 minus 1% of E6, that is the last value today or yesterday, then sell, otherwise don't do anything. Just keep going. So now each time we press F9, it will redo all of that. And you will see that most of the time we don't do anything, but sometimes it says sell. And in general it says sell, but every once in a while it says buy. Of course, there is uncertainty, that's why we use a Monte Carlo simulation. So what happens if, for instance, if we, know we wait for the next day, and that happens to be 12, for instance, that will affect, of course, everything here. So it will say probably sell, because that was a, a, hockey, a lucky hit. And based on the previous performances, that is not very likely to continue. That was not a trend. So, this works great if you do it for 30 values here. But let's say you want a closer range. The last 15 or 20. So we are going to do that three times. And we determine here, how many do you want to do? The last 30, or the last 25, or the last 20? You type in these numbers. And the rest is basically the same. The only difference now is that the mean is a little more complicated to calculate. 
we have to do the mean of the last 30 values. Say you had 35, then you don't want the first 5 or the oldest 5. So we need the offset function. The offset function says start in B2 and then offset by F1 rows. And F1 is 0 rows. And how many columns offset? N 0. No columns offset. Up to offset, start in B2, but G1 is the total number of rows. So we need to know how we calculated this one. This one is the count of BB minus E1. So minus E1, which is the, the, the last 30, so it really should be 0. And that one is the count of BB. Because we didn't use count A, it will not calculate the label B1. Once we know that, we can calculate the mean based on 0 and 30, or the standard deviation based on 0 and 30. Again, if I make this 10, then it will automatically adjust. And it will say then start at 20 down, offset by 20, offset by 30, and the mean and standard deviation will change, of course. I'm undoing that. So in this case, we need to adjust the if function, but it's basically the same as the one we used before. Then we repeated all of this, but now for 25, so the calculation is it should offset by 5 and then by 30, because we have 30 in total. Calculate the mean, standard deviation, create a data table here again, and find out what you should do. Based on the last 25, if we use that trend, we should sell, not should sell, but it might be wise to sell. And we do it, did it also for 20, so it offsets by 10 and then by 30. And in this case it says buy, because based on the last 20 values, that is probably the wisest decision. So each time I press F9, I will get different results, of course. But in this case, it, it's rather consistent sell, sell, buy. Sometimes don't do anything here based on the last 30 values, but do it right there. Now, the only thing you might want to change on your own is that buy or sell formula, depending on how much risk you want to take. That point zero 0.01 is basically a risk factor that you have to consider. Um, some people might, would probably also say instead of the stand standard deviation, you should use the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of cases. I leave that up to you. I'm just giving you the, the, the format, the framework in how you uh, tackle such a situation.